Hi, this is Lindsay, one of the co-hosts of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Jessica Hammer, co-host of Crowned and Dangerous here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Crowned and Dangerous, where Maddie and I talk about all things pageant-related, especially our experiences in the Miss America organization. A new show comes out bi-weekly, every other Thursday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Crowned and Dangerous. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Welcome to the C. Jane Sell Podcast, a relatable sales podcast for your weekly dose of sanity. I'm your host, Chelsea Dupre, and I'm your host, Lee Nevis. Hey, friends. Welcome to another episode of Your Girls at C. Jane Sell. What's up? So, this episode is going to be a little bit different than most, and we're pretty excited about it. Oh, yes. Um, after a wonderful girls' day, <laughs> and then two mental breakdowns, one from each of us within 24 hours, we decided if you can't freaking laugh at yourself, then... Who what? are you? Yeah, yeah, I mean... You know? Like, what can you laugh what at? What can you laugh at, really? Because <laughs> <laughs> life just happens. It does. So, um, some of these stories that we have that we're sharing are things we found online from blogs and posts that people have shared of funny stories. Some are from our actual friends and coworkers that they're sharing. Some are funny. Some are not funny. Some are relatable. Some are just, you've been there, so it might be funny to you and not someone else and well then it's not for that someone else absolutely absolutely <laughs> not for you honey yes <laughs> <laughs> okay sis um but yeah so we wanted to share something a little bit different give you all a laugh mm-hmm. and we want to try to do this more frequently so because you have stories let us know oh my gosh please let us know we will give you a little phone call record you because sometimes like i think that you can go through and you can, you know, read as much, like, motivational, self-help, listen to inspiring stories, and that is incredible and wonderful, and I love that ish, and everyone else loves that ish, but sometimes you just need to, like, hear that someone else sucked, or, like, someone else's day, like, you know, they messed up on this, so that way, like, you know that you're a human, and when you mess up, it's okay. And so, that's what we are doing today here, uh-huh. because we just want to share some hilarious and ridiculous sales horror stories. Would it be horror stories? Sales? Maybe. Some might be. Yeah. This is your weekly dose of sanity. Hey. Coming to you. That's like in our intro. Or something. Oh my god. <laughs> You're really smart. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, I guess without further ado. Let's do this, girl. Let's do this. Enjoy these stories just like we did. Okay, so, like, I do stupid stuff all the time, so, I mean, I can't compile just one funny story. Right. I'm a walking humor box, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Totally. But there was this time that my sales manager was on a meeting with me, and we'd been on a couple meetings, and she kept calling um, the fiscal year the physical year. So... (laughs) We're sitting in a meeting, and she's saying something about, like, physical, you know, your the, your physical year is coming up at the end, blah, 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 blah. We're talking about the fiscal year, right? So, if I, I, I couldn't correct her. She's right. my boss, A, and B. Like, she's my boss. <laughs> so, we get out to the car, and I'm like, hmm, uh, I think when you say physical, you mean fiscal? And she's like, oh, my gosh, I've been saying that wrong this whole time. Yes. Yes, you have. Oh, no. So, it's like... Oh, my God. That's so funny. Yes. Oh, that's the worst. We all laugh about it now. I mean, I have gone from seeing people butt naked in the streets of downtown Louisville, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and another one is my friend Adam Barron. Um, I am notorious for saying, like, hey, I put a goodie bag together. I want to bring it by and introduce myself or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, he was like, see, you're a girl. And you can say that, and I can't, and you get away with it. And I was like, just try it, bro. Like, yeah. what are you going to lose? And he's like, okay, because I just sent a 
set a pretty big meeting. And so he's like, okay, I'll try it. So he calls this guy that was kind of a jerk before. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, Bob, this is Adam Barron with Unifirst. Um, I wanted to see if you had some time next week to get together because I put together a goodie bag for you. Um, no thanks. <laughs> and he just hung up. Oh my god. <laughs> so anyways, that was pretty funny. That's hilarious. That was a pretty good one. And that's a good example of not everything works for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had a weave fall out in a meeting. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, a weave fell out. Um, I've been harassed by people on the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, I had to carry a mannequin into a meeting. Oh, no. You know, just, like, little uncomfortable things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Happens to everybody. But that's the one I want to share for this time. That was good. That was really good. That was just a little, little giggle. I enjoyed it. Okay, so, um, next, stories. So, these are actually three different blog posts that we found, and I wanted to share because they made me laugh really hard. Um, so, and also it kind of, like, makes you realize that this even happens to, like, the most successful of people. So, um, one guy, his name's Steve, he's the vice president of sales at Altiscale. His story (laughs) is, in the late 90s, I was working for Tivoli Systems, which I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that right, um, which had just been acquired by IBM and was working on a deal with Charles Schwab. At this time, enterprise software sales reps always wore suits and ties, even on Fridays. We were actually much more formal than other parts of the country. However, while my first Charles Schwab meeting cemented our relationship for the deal, it also challenged my wardrobe choices. To my surprise, When I entered the meeting at Charles Schwab, they claimed it was a no-tie zone and proceeded to cut off my tie and pin it to the wall. (laughs) Ultimately, we closed the deal, my biggest one yet, which resulted in the ongoing joke that I could now afford to buy a new tie. That cracks me up. Ha! I think, like, if I was in that situation, I probably would have cried. Can you imagine walking into a client's office and them cutting off a tie that you're wearing, or, like, a jacket, or, like, a coat, like... What would you even do? Thank you. I hated that tie. Yeah, I know. So, that's actually pretty hilarious. Um, so, second story is from Colleen. She's the owner of Engage Selling Solutions. Um, her story is, <laughs> I'm an atrocious speller, and often autocorrect can figure out what I'm trying to say. In one email to an important prospect, I thanked him for his vice mail and then apologized for kissing him. <laughs> I learned the hard way that spell check doesn't fix the wrong words, just the wrong spelling. The buyer had a good laugh about it, and his re- in his response to me, um, I learned to always read my important emails out loud before sending them to buyers. Smart. Not only is that funny, but it's a great tip. Absolutely. I have a very similar personal story that that just reminded me of (laughs) in a sense where I was texting um, a season ticket holder because they asked me to text them to set up a meeting um, at my last at my last sales job. And her name was Trudy and I text her and I called her Turdy. So um, I was like, I was like, hey, Turdy, like about to call you in 15. (laughs) I hated myself for the rest of the day, so that was embarrassing. And she ignored it, which is even worse. Like, I wish she would have said, like, LOL. Like, well, remember that one time that I sent an email to one of your old bosses and I spelled your name wrong? Oh, yeah, you did that. That's embarrassing. Yeah, Chelsea sent an email to my old boss and spelled my name wrong. (laughs) So, there was a lot of ways to spell me. They were like, you guys seem really close. I was gonna swear she knows me. I swear she knows me. Oh, so that was funny. Those are some good stories. So I had this like crazy um, sales manager, like very very micromanaging, and she would make me include her on like what we call like initial research meetings or presentations or anything like that. So. Um, I am, like, maybe, I have an hour meeting scheduled, and, like, maybe 
um, 15 minutes in, I can tell it's not going well. Like, I have probably eight people on my conference line, plus myself and my boss. I can tell it's not going well. People aren't interacting. They're not answering questions. There's just really not dialogue. And she says, so she cuts me off mid-sense and says, well, that's been brutal. I think that we could all agree. So let me just take it from here. And oh, my God. completely throws me under the bus and, like, points out the fact that, like, the first 15 minutes were literally, like, painful for everyone involved and completely just destroyed my credibility with this client. So that's my first really bad story. Oh, that's a good, that's a good bad story because that's awful. My second bad story is my second day of where most of our sales happened, like, um, through, like, WebEx. Mm -hmm. I was, like, trying to, like, figure out my demo site and, like, resetting my password, and I reset the password for the entire demo site for the entire company, so our our sales demo site was down for the entire afternoon on my second day, (laughs) and I could only tell, like, two or three people that it was me because, I mean, the amount of money that was potentially lost in an eight-hour workday because not one person could do a demo. (laughs) Oh, my God. Mary, that's really bad. I'm really glad you told me that. Um, And then, is it just you and Chelsea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And this doesn't count, but when I was working at Enterprise, I, it was, like, a good transition from Hanover to, like, you know, big people land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, was hungover, and could feel that I was going to puke, like, projectile puke, and, like, I said something, and I, I coughed, and puke was in my mouth, and I had to swallow it with a, with a customer once. That was also not good. <laughs> Mary, that's so, <laughs> that's so bad. Oh, my God, that has, that made my day. Oh, my God. So, those are some um, interesting ones, but not really, like, anything with the um, oh, I have a, okay, this is at a conference. Oh, this is just great to talk about all of this. Oh, absolutely. So this was not, like, an actual, um, I think that you all could even do an entire, and I don't think you've done this, but I think you could even do an entire podcast on, like, the, what women go through in terms of sales with, like, sexism, like, what we have to put up with. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a vendor once, um, like, we were at a conference, and I actually brought Lyndon, the guy I was dating at the time, Chelsea, with me, mm-hmm. and this vendor, who was, like, 50 years old, um, wanted to make it known that his girlfriend was my age, how much money he had, blah, blah, blah. He even, um, like, leaned over and felt the lining of my dress, like, around the collar, and was like, oh, it's leather, that's sexy, <gasps> um, paid for my drinks the entire night, and bought them, like, brought them to me, but would not speak to my boyfriend, like, bought me a present, like, it was so Yikes. odd. Yeah. But as a woman, you feel like you, and as, like, the customer-client partnership, you feel like you don't, you can't really say anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, for sure. For sure. It's so um, uncomfortable. But I had, at a conference once, a vendor and my coworker, um, a vendor was there, um, and I was with my coworker and the vendor partner. So it's not like our, we're trying to sell to them, but, like, both of our businesses kind of depend on that partnership. Mm-hmm. Said, so um, are you going to take her home or do I have dibs? <gasps> Married with children. Stop. Ew. Okay, you have to tell all of these again. Gross. Man. So Disgusting. those are the kind of things that like those, that kind of stuff happens. I guarantee you so much to, to women, especially like in a male dominated industry. Oh, absolutely. Um, I have sure people at Enterprise all the, all the time tell me, ask me, I know that Enterprise, you know, wants to hire um, college athletes, but, like, do you have to be hot? Do you Or, like, do you have to be sexy in order to work there? Like, is that part of the interview process? Blah, 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 blah. Ew. It's, yeah, it's really bad. That's it's really bad. Gross. Gross. Foul. Ugh. Well, this is amazing, and I'm really happy that you told us this, and we can use this, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that, like, how, I think that you could even do, like, how does your, how can your boss really support you or undermine you, and the pressure that women face in a sales role. Oh, for sure, for sure. You should be our guest on that one. Yeah. So this is a story of a story of someone I know that I cannot name because it is freaking embarrassing. (laughs) 
<laughs> Those are the best kinds. I am so ready. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't listen, so here we go. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so she was uh, in a meeting with another coworker, and at this meeting place, there was a huge woolly mammoth tusk, like a fossil, right? Right. <laughs> and um, so she... Uh, Proceeded to ask what it was, and the guy's like, oh, it's a woolly mammoth tusk. And she's like, man, those are just so beautiful. I love watching those on the Discovery Channel, and I love that they're, like, really bringing them back into the population. <laughs> and he's like, uh... And he looked at the other girl that I work with and was like, like, what? <laughs> like, oh. wait, like, 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 you, like, you know those are extinct, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, hundreds of years ago extinct. So that was pretty funny. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. I love that they're bringing those back. I love that they're, like, on the trend again. Yeah, bringing back woolly mammoths is really important. I just think it's really important. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's bad. That was pretty funny. That was a good one. Yeah, so I was in recruiting and staffing for a variety of years, and that, of course, came with many stories. Um, but one of the most memorable was um, I used to recruit scientists, and a lot of them work shift work um, in manufacturing companies. And I got a call that one of the scientists in um, second or third shift had um, just basically been writing down results and not actually running the quality test, um, which is obviously a big no-no. Um, and essentially that was zero tolerance, and he needed um, to be fired immediately. So I called the contractor, um, didn't answer, left him a voicemail, didn't answer, emailed him, didn't answer. Um, it was getting, getting pretty close to uh, his time to start work, and the client was too far away to drive and make it there on time to make sure he didn't go in. So I sent him a text to call me immediately to not go into the, uh, into the plant, um, and then he calls me back, and I let him know that he's terminated. And then um, about two weeks later, um, he was unemployed, and in the middle of the day, I guess he was um, partaking in some things and um, was a little intoxicated on something and ended up sending me a dick pic. Um, And then um, not long after that, a big paragraph about um, how he was watching the sunset. It reminded him of me and my beauty. (gasps) He had never met me. Um, oh, and then he said, my oh, my God. God. <laughs> then said, oh, my God, ignore that. Um, and then um, probably three weeks after that, I got probably three to four paragraphs of a very sexual nature that made even our um, employee relations per- person blush. <sighs> and I had to screenshot and send, their, send all of them to her. Um, with verification that I had told the contractor to delete my number and never text me again. Um, <laughs> so we had proof I didn't respond to any of his sexual texts. Oh my god, that's insane. Yeah, so recruiting and staffing, y'all. If you'd like an interesting life, <laughs> that'll keep you on your toes. I love it. Oh my god, Molly, you're the best. Thanks for that story. <laughs> Oh, I think it is. Absolutely. We'll probably just end on that one. I mean, I don't know if anyone can top that. Right? <laughs> oh, I yeah. Started, I'm like, uh, well, my, um, my friend Lauren, who's still in recruiting and staffing, told me they fired a girl the other day, and they deactivated her card, mm-hmm. and then she snuck in behind somebody else and uh, destroyed their mailroom. <gasps> Holy cow. That's insane. And another girl showed up wasted, and they basically thought she was intoxicated at, like, 11 a.m., but they couldn't get her to the drug test facility until, like, 3 or 4, and by the time they got there, she was still three times over the drunk limit. <gasps> oh, my God. Jeez. Yeah. Y'all recruiting and staffing people. You're wild. You're hey, wild. Don't put me in that category anymore. I'm <laughs> self-parking now. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. My mistake, my mistake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm parking in enforcement, so that was my past life. You're the best. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you, Molly, for that beautiful story. Hey, 
you know, anything for you, Luke. Thank you. All right, you all, thank you so much for listening in this week. We hope you enjoyed. We will try to do this more often. Hope you laughed a little, related a lot. Didn't really rise too much. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't roll your eyes. That is always our number one priority. Yeah. We don't want people to roll their eyes. Because just so you know, my mom told me that if you roll your eyes too much, they're going to get stuck in the back of your head. Oh, gosh. I wish my mom would have told me that. Because yeah, I rolled my eyes. Told me. Well, I roll my eyes all the time, and I'm, like, legally blind, so there well, you go. Mom should have told me. Mm-hmm. Scientific more, evidence right there. Don't roll your eyes. Story. <laughs> Listen to your mama, <laughs> laugh at yourself, and subscribe to our show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, like, rate, review, subscribe. You can do all that stuff. Follow, follow us. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> on Instagram <laughs> at CJNSL Podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will see you next week. Yeah, right? Do the things and stuff. Yeah, do it. Bye. Bye.